In the last episode, I was on my way to Salt Lake City to visit a friend and also make a huge, huge change in my life, like quitting van life. Unfortunately, things did not go as planned in the next four weeks and my life was just turned upside down over the next month. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I did not feel like being creative at all or picking up the camera during this next month. So I'm going to explain all of that to you now and all of the events that unfolded to lead me where I'm at today, which is back in California. Well, I'm going to test drive my new car. We'll see if uh, this works out. It's my overlanding SUV so I can finally get a trailer. This is the one you get to drop. Oh, yay. <laughs> this is so cool. I'm gonna take you over here to the podium. Right. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> Alright guys, here it comes. It's like Christmas. Such an amazing buying experience. <laughs> it was so easy. So right now, you probably are expecting me to show you this new all-wheel drive overlanding vehicle that I purchased and also what's to come in the future, like the trailer that I'm looking at to tow with this all-wheel drive. And as much as I would like for that to happen and show you all of that, it is not the reality. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of what happened. So this is one of the moments where I almost quit van life. I was ready for that truck and trailer. I've been looking for a while. So I purchased this Honda Passport all-wheel drive from Carvana, but it was definitely not an all-wheel drive and Carvana, they did a bait and switch on me. Now, they tried to deny it at first, but I had all of the proof in my paperwork that had already been signed showing that it was an all-wheel drive, and they presented to me the same VIN-numbered car, but as a front-wheel drive. So their information on their website was inaccurate, and their price was inaccurate for a front-wheel drive. The definition of bait and switch. There's one definition, which is a sales tactic in which a customer is attracted by the advertisement of a low priced item, but is then encouraged to buy a higher priced one. That's not the definition that fits the situation. The second definition is what fits, which is the ploy of offering a person something desirable to gain favor, then thwarting expectations with something less desirable. And that was a situation here where they gave me a front wheel drive when it should have been an all wheel drive, which was on all of our paperwork and the contracts that I had signed. This is my absolute first time experience with Carvana and I know a lot of other people out there who have said that they've had very favorable experiences with Carvana. And mine was up until this point when they did the bait and switch. So I don't know what happened behind the scenes. I don't know if it was intentional. I don't know if it was an accident and someone just didn't notify me, but nevertheless, it was a really big problem on their side. So if you have experience with Carvana, leave me a comment below and let me know what that is. Like, are they really a horrible company to work with? Or what was your experience? Did you have a really good experience with them? And should I try them out again maybe in the future or any of us watching for that matter? So what's next? Well. I left very disappointed and drove all the way back to Washington. Carvana would not even pay for my gas when they admitted to their mistake and they said that they wouldn't give me a reimbursement for gas unless I purchased another car from them. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. Not in this situation after what I had just seen that they did. So. I went back to Washington. It was a cluster for sure and a huge, huge letdown because I had already been planning for everything that I needed to do to move into this truck and trailer life. So now I had to switch gears and I'm still in the van. The drive back to Washington for the summer season was extremely therapeutic with all the various landscapes and cooler weather. But little did I know, that that piece was going to be unraveled once again in a very short amount of time. Yeah. 
here we are in Winthrop, Washington. There's the Winthrop Inn. The river is really, really full right now, but it kind of makes sense because that would be all of the runoff from the mountains all the way from Canada. Here's more of the town of Winthrop. You know I don't do touristy very well, so we're not stopping. Plus it's late and I wanna get to my campsite. Kinda cute places though. Cascades Outdoor Store. There's a saloon. The Emporium. Kinda cute. Wow, this is so beautiful. I lucked out with this spot. This is the last one here in the National Forest. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Really? There's other sites just over there, about five more, but it's a very small campsite area. But just so you can kind of get an idea of how close I am to the river. So here's the van, and the river is right down here. That's close, you can hear it rushing. It's gonna be a good night's sleep. After that long drive back to Washington, it felt so amazing to be camping right off of the river in the Cascade Mountains. It felt refreshing to clear my head by the river. I needed to settle back into van life, whereas I was in this mode of purging things from the van and getting ready for the next chapter of nomad life. The one thing that I have never ever said is that van life is easy. It definitely has its challenges, like the things that I've been going through here. But those challenges can be really worth it when you have these beautiful, incredible moments like here at the river and you fall in love with the nomad life, whether you're in an RV, a van, a motorcycle, or just traveling the country and staying at hotels. It's a good experience and something that I absolutely love in my sixth year of RVing. The times when I really hate van life is when I have repairs or when things go wrong and we know it's going to happen but it still doesn't make it any more desirable when it does happen. You just have to roll with it and remember all of the good times that you have with RVing. I woke up the next morning to an alert that it was going to potentially flood and there was an increased risk for mudslides in the area. The Pacific Northwest has gotten an incredible amount of rain this year, which is why the rivers are so high everywhere. Next thing I know, the ranger is coming by and telling us all to leave because the risk is too high. I really wanted to just stay there for a couple more days by the river and relax and enjoy the peace and quiet before hitting the road again. This is one of those times where I just cringe on having to move again. But one must adapt and be flexible in this nomad life or you will not survive. After a couple of days of urban camping, I headed into Seattle, specifically West Seattle, for a package I needed to pick up and also visit my very, very favorite restaurant, which is Endoline Joe's. Endoline Joe's is a must if you are ever in West Seattle. Seattle has changed a lot since I left over five years ago. More traffic and congestion than ever before. But the energy from this city, the eclectic vibe and the feel is nostalgic and it really makes me feel like I'm home again. The next day I found out the worst news yet, which was my best friend and childhood friend from high school, Angela, was murdered in her house with her husband and their house was set on fire with um, their precious dogs inside and I just, I crumbled. I just crumbled. It was so hard for me to process that um, 
that she had died and that and so horrifically and that we would never be able to share moments with each other again. It's still hard for me to talk about. In that moment, I just thought, God, I cannot take any more right now. It is just too much. I've been dealing with some personal things that I haven't shared with you guys, and it's just, it's too personal to go into you. But all of these things were just compounding on me, and I, I needed to rest and get off the road. And so, um, thankfully, some good friends of mine, Kim and Tim, who I actually met from my channel, um, offered up their cabin to me in eastern Colorado. So off to Colorado I went for another long drive from Washington to eastern Colorado. Not only were all of these drives super painful, I think, to my body and my physique, and also to my pocketbook with the rising gas prices. Yeah, that was hard. And if all of that was not enough, there were still more bad news on the way in the next couple of days. On the way to Colorado, Lily got sick again. It's the pancreatitis flare-up that she gets every once in a while. And it really had a hold of her this time. And it was a terrifying experience. She uh, almost died and it, it was excruciating. So I had taken her to the vet. She hadn't eaten in eight days or um, drank any water. Now I took her to the vet before that to get her her meds, but still as I was taking her to the vet, she wasn't eating or drinking any water. I was having to force water down her throat with a syringe. The doctors were putting IVs in her to give her some fluids. They were giving her medications to soothe her stomach and kind of get rid of the flare-up, but nothing was working. And then on the eighth day, I took her in and I was like, is she dying? Like what's happening? We ran all kinds of tests again and just nothing was coming up. We tested her for THC poisoning in case she had picked something up at a campsite as we were um, walking. We tested her for Addison's disease. She's not even labeled pancreatitis. She's never been diagnosed with it, but that's all of her symptoms. So again, it's the same thing that keeps happening year after year after year and we can't figure out what's going on. So uh, finally, the eighth day, she started to recover. She started to um, eat again and drink liquids, and she was kind of coming back to her herself, but during the worst of it, she couldn't walk. She could barely open her eyes. She was so lethargic that she would just drop her head down. She would sleep all day. I mean, she looked like she was in pain, and it was terrifying, terrifying. In a weird turn of events, on a positive note, uh, another friend of mine, Kathy, who I did a Born Free RV tour with last year, we just met on the road and did this random RV tour, which has been, by the way, my number one viewed video of all time. I'll link it down below in the description box. But she was such a rock for me while I was there. It was so random. I just saw her in the Walmart parking lot and uh, we connected again and she told I told her what was going on with Lily and she stayed with me during those days and just really helped me and was such a good friend and and a support so Kathy oh, I thank you so much for your friendship and and for being there for me I I think that people that are put in your path for oh my god Amber still crying oh, I'm so sorry um I think people that are put in your path for a reason just when you need them and Kathy was one of those all right, I gotta stop crying. And this is another positive moment that I can tell you about, about being in van life, is you meet just random strangers sometimes who turn out to be the best of friends. And, you know, that's one of the things that I really love about this lifestyle, even through all of the challenges. Feeling Lily, you better? Look at that face, she's so bright eyed. <gasps> I missed you, mommy, I missed you, yes. I did. Thank you for getting better. We got 
got a good feast here. Guys, this is Kim and Tim. Hi. I met them in Florida. I meet all my friends out on the, on the road. But this is the beautiful cabin they're letting me stay in. So look at this feast they cooked. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Absolutely. I hope it's as good as it sort of looks. It's leftovers. I'm sure it's easy. it is. <laughs> The cabin was such a respite for me and I'm so thankful to Kim and Tim for offering it up to me for the extended time period that they did. But it was only there for four days because uh, here we go with more crazy turn of events. My altitude sickness started kicking in and I thought that when I had been in Alamosa with Lily at the vet for eight days that um, I would be fine because I had acclimated to a little bit of a lower elevation and then would gain an altitude and would be okay. But that proved to not be the point. My blood pressure went through the roof. I was gasping for air by the fourth day. And I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. And my doctor actually advised me to drop to a lower elevation. So I went to Salida for a little bit, a couple of days, but I was still having major issues. So, Hence the reason I'm on the California coastline. It's the only place that I could find that was close by, that was sea level, that was cool enough, and I didn't have to drive all the way back to Washington because believe me, I was not going to drive back to Washington for a third time after everything that has happened. It was quite an interesting drive going to California from Colorado. I ended up having to go through Flagstaff, Arizona because it was the only place that I could find that was cool enough. 101 degrees in Albuquerque. Especially in the evenings to uh, stay for the night before I continued on because all of the temperatures in between were 100 plus degrees. It was insane how hot it was. There was a crash where we have been sitting on the highway now for an hour. We just finally started moving, but holy cow, what a day been driving for 10 hours. I still have another hour and 11 minutes. But look at that sunset. It's beautiful. Except for the power plant that's over there. So here's the accident. We'll see what happened here. See some tire tracks in the road. Oh no, a semi. Looks like there was a fire too. I ended up going through the Mojave Desert where it was 110 degrees outside on the road. It was just a lot of long hours of driving to have air conditioning in the van and get to my destination. It's 104 degrees near Needles, California or Lake Havasu. While it's been a rough month in van life, this isn't the norm. So what am I doing now? Well, for now, I'm gonna stay over here on the coastline until things cool off in the Southwest uh, for the winter time. I'm going to relax and enjoy this intoxicating ocean and the healing effects of that water and enjoy these beautiful moments by the ocean. Thank you so much for joining me on this crazy, crazy adventure today. And a huge, huge extra thank you to my Patreon members for all of their support as well. Please hit that thumbs up button if you liked this video. Even if you didn't like it and there was too many like bad moments that were happening, hit that thumbs up anyways. It helps other people see my videos and gets this video out to everybody else out there who may have never come across my channel. And surprisingly, I'm getting a lot of you lately who are saying, how did I never come across your channel before? I don't know, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.